Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you PLSQL cursors. So let's begin. In PLSQL, a cursor is nothing but a pointer that points to the result of a query, and it has two types. One is an implicit cursor, another one is an explicit cursor. Uh, let's take a look at implicit cursors first. So whenever Oracle executes some SQL statement, for example, a select into statement or an insert statement or update and delete, it automatically creates an implicit cursor. So this is not something that you have to create. It's already created. And it internally manages the whole execution cycle of this type of an implicit cursor. Let's see now explicit cursors. An explicit cursor in uh, PLSQL is, an, is a select statement that is declared explicitly in the declaration section of the current block of PLSQL. For an explicit cursor, you have to control the whole execution cycle, starting from open, fetch, and close. And Oracle defines an executed execution cycle, and then it executes an SQL statement and associates a cursor with it. Uh, you can see on your screens right now a diagram that shows you how exactly an explicit cursor works in PLSQL. Let's examine each of uh, these steps in detail. So the first step is to declare a cursor. And before using the explicit cursor, you have to declare it in the declaration section of the block and to declare it we write the syntax in this manner so it is cursor cursor is the keyword used to specify that this uh, block is going to be a cursor just like you would uh, specify procedure or function to show that this is going to be a procedure or a function and then you would name the cursor so you can give any query you like I mean, any name you like to the cursor. And then you will have the is keyword. And after that, you will specify the query which you want to run as a cursor. So this would be the exact query that you want to use as a cursor. So it could be any select, update, delete, query, whatever you like. Okay. And the next step now is to open a cursor. So before you start fetching rows from the cursor, you have to open it. And to open the cursor, you need to use this type of a syntax. So you have to use open, and then you write down the name of the cursor and end it with a semicolon. And this cursor name should be the same that you declared in the declaration section. So when you open a cursor, Oracle parses the query, and then it binds those variables and executes the associated SQL statement. And so Oracle determines an execution plan. It also associates all the parameters and hosts and everything. It also determines the result and sets the cursor to the first row of the result. So this is how uh, the cursor works in PLSQL. Let's move to the next step. The next step is the fetch from a cursor. So how to actually fetch data from the cursor. Now the fetch statement places the contents of the current row into variables. And the syntax of the fetch looks like this. You have the fetch keyword, then the cursor name, then the into keyword, and a variable list. So if you want to retrieve uh, all the rows in a result set, you need to fetch each row one at a time till, the, till you reach the last one. So you need to specify the fetch keyword and the name of the cursor into, and then you list out all the variables where you want the cursor results to be fetched and stored. The next step is uh, closing the cursor. So this is where once you are done fetching all the rows, you can just close the cursor using the close statement. So you just need to write down close, which is the keyword, 
and then you mention the name of the cursor which you declared in the beginning. When you close a cursor, it instructs Oracle to release the allocated memory at an appropriate time. So if you declare a cursor in a procedure or a function, then the cursor will automatically get closed as soon as uh, the, cursor, the procedure or the function ends. But if you create a cursor all by itself, then you might have to specify when to close this type of a cursor. Uh, now let's try to understand a little bit more about the um, implicit cursors and what kinds of uh, attributes they have, which I showed you in the beginning of the video. So a cursor has the, these four attributes, which I explained. The first one is the percent is open attribute. This attribute is true if the cursor is open and it is false if the cursor is not open. The next one is the percent found attribute. It can have four values. Number one is null. So before you uh, begin your fetching through the cursor, the value of the percent found is null. Then it becomes true whenever a record is successfully fetched. Then the third type of value it can have is false if there was no row returned. And finally, it could have an invalid cursor value if the cursor did not open at all because you made some mistake in the syntax. The third, um, uh, let's see the next attribute of cursor, which is known as percent not found. This also has four values. The first one is null. It is always null before you begin the cursor, uh, before you begin fetching with the cursor. The next one is uh, false. So if the record was fetched successfully, then percent not found is going to be false. If no record is fetched, then percent not found is going to be true. So it's just the opposite of percent found. And of course, the fourth value that it can have is the invalid cursor. So if the cursor was not opened at all, then percent not found is going to be invalid. Uh, the next uh, attribute which is present in the cursor is the percent row count. The percent row count attribute returns to you number of rows that are fetched by the cursor. So it is, uh, if it is not opened, that means if the cursor does not uh, at all execute, then the percent row count would also have uh, the invalid cursor stored inside of it. Now I'm going to implement an implicit cursor but um, it's not exactly, I, I cannot, cannot say that I'm implementing it because it always implements uh, on its own whenever you run any SQL query. But I'm just going to show you some of the properties of it. So right now, we are going to write a program where we are going to use one uh, table. And I'll just uh, quickly show you that table. So this is what the table looks like. This is the table. It contains uh, these nine rows. And in this table itself, I'm going to perform some uh, query. And then I'm going to show you how the implicit cursor actually works using this table. You don't need to create the exact same table. You can create your own table that you like. Just modify the query accordingly. Now, in this case, so the name of my table is emp and I'm going to use that. Now first what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare whatever variables I'm going to use. In this case, I'm going to use only one variable, which is counting number of rows. Because every time I want to count how many rows got affected by the query that I implemented. So like we saw earlier, there are four properties. Uh, percent found, not found, and then there was count, uh, that, that is row count, and is open. Is open, I'm going to show you later on, but right now I'm going to explain to you the other three properties in this program. So let's write begin. And now I'm just going to write a, a simple SQL query. So it looks like this, delete from M, that's my table where depth code 
equal to C and S L2. Uh, you can see from my command line here that I'm having two depth codes of that sort. So I want to use that. That's why I've mentioned here C and SL2 and semicolon. And once that is done, now I'm going to write an if condition where I'm going to mention if SQL percent found, then here I'm going to write down count of rows which I declared earlier. This is going to hold how many rows are there. Now, um, why I'm writing this? Because I already have this query here. So this query is definitely going to affect some rows. If it affects some rows, then this um, property of a, of a cursor, which is percent found, will become true. And so my if condition will get executed. Suppose this query has a condition where the depth code does not match with any of the depth codes present in my table, then it's just going to uh, skip this condition and do whatever else I ask it to do. This is the condition I'm writing when this query actually finds something to delete. So when that happens, I want to count how many rows were deleted. So here I'm going to do count rows equal to, this is where we'll use the next property, which is SQL percent row count. And that is done. And after that, of course, I want to print my count. So I'll write down dbms underscore output dot put underscore line. And I'm going to say um, I'm just going to write down row count. And here I'll concatenate this with how many rows got deleted. So just write the name of the variable that is count underscore rows and semicolon. Once this is done, I'm just going to end the if statement right here. So this is going to execute when my delete query actually finds something to delete. If there is no such thing available as CNSLT, then I would want to have another if statement, which I'm writing here. Now I could very well just write else because I already have if I can just write else, but I want to demonstrate the use of another uh, cursor property or attribute which is not found. And that's why I'm going to use that instead. So that's why I'm writing another if statement. So this is if percent not found. Then, so this is the case when percent not found property is uh, true. This happens when the delete query does not find anything to delete. So in this case, I just want to print that nothing was deleted or nothing was found. So let's just put that here. No rows deleted. And semicolon. And let me end my if statement. Also end the begin part and my code is ready. I'm just going to now copy this code and go to command line. Let me clear all of this and right click and hit paste and a forward slash. And it says uh, the row count is two. The reason is that something got deleted, which we can of course verify when I do select star from and the name of my table is M. So you can see uh, those two rows that I had right in the middle, they are gone. And that's why it gave me this row count. We could try the same program again, but this time use some name that's not available. So let's try the Try to run the same thing actually, it doesn't matter. Because now the CNSLT is not available anymore. So I can just right click, uh, let me clear this. And I'll do right click again. And forward slash. And you can see this time it prints no rows deleted because there are no rows to delete with the depth code CNSLT. So this is how a cursor works in BLSQL. 
uh, and it's an, it's an implicit cursor because it's already embedded into every type of SQL query that you run. For example, this one. So this is a query that I'm running in SQL. It's got nothing to do with PLSQL, but these properties are available for me to use as I like. And that is why we call it an implicit cursor because it's available already. You don't have to actually make it. Now let's create an explicit cursor in PLSQL. So for this purpose, I'm going to use this table, which I've used in practically all of my videos. Uh, it is the employees table. It looks like this. Uh, there's employee ID and the first name, last name, department code, salary of all the employees. And from this table, I would like to generate a report that tells me that, you know, this particular employee works in this particular department. And most of the times when we want to create reports from tables showing, you know, how many hours the employee worked throughout the year, what was his or her salary, where that employee was working in which department, uh, then to generate these types of detailed uh, reports, we normally use PLSQL cursors and explicit cursors. So this is what we are going to do, but we are not going to create a really large and complex report. We are going to create a very simple report that says that uh, Al B the leader works in admin department, then pi R squared works in accounting department and so on. So it's a very simple thing, but of course you can expand this same program to create a larger uh, report, a larger, more comprehensive report. So let's begin. Now I'm going to write my code in uh, Notepad. So I'm going to first mention my declare block. And in the declare block, now what I want from the table is the first name, last name, and department. So I'm going to make variables to fetch this data. So I'm going to write down F name. And now I have two options here. I can mention the data type by going over here and doing describe employees and then checking the data type here and writing the same data type in my code. But I don't want to do that. And there is a way out of it, which is to mention the name of the table and the column name, and then simply writing percent type. So what this does is gives the data type of the first name column of employees to F name, which is a variable that I have created. So I don't need to mention its data type to match with first name. I can directly get the data type in this manner. So you can see over here, uh, this is the way you can write it. And if you wish to, you can write this as first name, or you can write it in, in a way that it doesn't match with the original column name. So either way, it doesn't matter. And let's now write the second variable, which is L name. So last name. And for this, I'm going to write last name percent type. And finally, uh, the depth code for which I'm going to write depth as the name of my variable. And this would be having the data type of the depth code column right here. So that's it, three variables declared. But now this is an explicit cursor. So I have to declare the cursor also. So I need to mention it like this. I have to write the cursor keyword and then the name of the cursor, just like you would write the name of a function or a procedure, you need to write the name of the cursor too. So I'm going to write the name as emp details. And after that, you need to mention the keyword is, just like in a procedure. And here you'll mention your query. So I just write, I want to write a very simple query that says select first name, comma, last name, comma, depth code from employees. And that's, uh, that's my query. It's a very simple query. 
So my declare block is now done. I have all the variables that I need. So I'll begin the execution block. And here I need to do open for that cursor that I created. So the name of my cursor was emp details. So I need to mention here open emp details, which will open the cursor, which is uh, which is the second step after declaring the cursor. Once I've done this, I need to now fetch each and every record from the cursor. So in order to not write the same instruction six times because my table contains six rows, I'm going to simply write down loop, which is the loop statement, simple loop statement in PLSQL to run the same code several times. And here I'll mention the fetch operation. So in fetch, you need to again write the name of the cursor, fetch emp details, and you need to mention in which variables you want to store the details. Now, remember that there are three columns that are being fetched from employees. So I need to provide three variables to get this data. And therefore, I'm going to write here into f name, comma l name, comma depth. These are the variables that I have created here. So when this query runs, the first name will get stored in the F name. The last name will get stored in L name and the depth code will get stored in depth. And now I can use these variables to print uh, my data in any way that I like. But before I do that, I want to write um, an end loop statement because if I do not mention an exit statement in the loop, then this loop will become infinite and I don't want that. So we'll write down exit when and at this point we will mention something that helps us to exit the loop. And for that I'm going to use the attribute of implicit cursors which are available. And this is the attribute, emp details uh, percent not found. So if you recall, this is an attribute of a cursor. And this attribute is uh, true when nothing is found. So once this fetch operation finishes fetching all the six rows, then the percent not found will become true. And at that point, I can uh, stop my loop. So that is why this exit statement is mentioned in this way. And after this, suppose uh, that this is my first row or the second row or anything up to sixth row, then I would like to print it. So I'm going to write down dbms output dot put underscore line. And here I will I would like to print that this person works in this department. So I need to write down the first name, that is F name. And I would like space between F name and L name. So I'm going to write down uh, the concatenation and single quote space, single quote. And then once again, concatenation and L name after which again concatenation and here i want to mention space works in and space once again and single quotes concatenation and here i will mention the department so depth and close the bracket and put a semicolon so this is done and once all that is done you can just end the loop once the loop is over, now you also need to close the cursor because you did write an open cursor statement here. So you also would be writing a closed cursor statement. So it's uh, very simple. You just write close and name of the cursor. And that's it. We can end the block here and copy the code, go to the command line and write down first of all set server output on and then go to the top bar edit and paste and use forward slash to run your code 
and you can see it prints perfectly well the names of all the employees and where they were. So this is a very simple report, like I said earlier, but you could generate even larger reports in the format that you like. So this is how you can implement explicit cursors in PLSQL. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Thank you.